Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Happy Easter. Welcome to worship. Let's stand for our call to worship. Yesterday, we thought death had won. Yesterday, we thought all was lost. And yesterday, yesterday, we thought Christ was gone. But not today. Today, we know that love has won. Today, we know that hope is real. Today, we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen today. Christ.
Well, let us pray. God of new beginnings, on that first Easter morning, the disciples struggled to hear the good news. Doubt clouded their minds. Negativity took root and hope vanished with a simple shake of their heads. As we return to this familiar text, help us to hear differently this morning. Open our ears that we might hear the sound of alleluias ringing through this text. Open our minds that the mystery and joy of Easter might feel within reach. Open up our hearts that we might believe the unbelievable. And like Peter, in this hearing, may we move closer to you, God of the empty tomb. We are hungry for your good news. Speak to us now. With hope in our hearts, we listen and we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning and happy Easter. We're glad that you're here to worship with us this morning, whether you're here in person or online. We are glad to be together this morning to celebrate this resurrection. But we know that it doesn't always feel like resurrection, that you might be here today just excited and ready to shout, He is risen, but you also might be here not feeling that resurrection. And so we make space for all of that here today. We hope that you can find hope in these songs, in these scriptures, in these prayers today, but know that you are welcome here right where you're at, wherever you are on your journey of faith. We have been looking at Peter's journey of faith this whole Lenten season. That's why there's this path of orange tape down here, because it is a winding journey of faith with starts and stops and sometimes steps backward after there's been some steps forward. So wherever you're at in your journey of faith, you are welcome here this morning. And I am sorry if we didn't get to greet you as you came in this morning. As you can tell, a lot of our people are involved in music today. So we didn't have all of our greeters out there, but we would love to greet you after the service. So please stick around for some cookies and some coffee. We would love to meet you this morning and say hello. But now, let's continue worshiping together, and you can check out some of the things we have coming up in our announcements in the bulletin.
this um, song, I Want to Be Where My Feet Are, all through Lent to remind us that when we come here to worship, when we're together with the hope and the joy, we want to actually be where our feet are. Where is your mind right now? Where is your heart? Let's bring it all in so that we can center ourselves together in the words of this song and the affirmation that we'll say as part of it. nights. We may stare at the empty tomb with more questions than answers. We may run our fingers over the burial cloths and still long for more. But today we are a people of hope. among us, healing, teaching, and leaving fingerprints throughout this world. We believe that the tomb could not hold him. We believe that the story is not over yet. For God is among us. Today we are a people of hope. can come forward.
Did you get any hope in your Easter basket? You probably got candy today and maybe some toys, but did you get hope? Hope is the biggest gift Jesus gives us on Easter because when he came back from the dead, he showed us that God is loving and good and able to give new life just like Jesus had promised. Jesus showed us we can trust in God's goodness and love, and that is having hope. Sometimes when things are really hard, it's not easy to trust in God's goodness and love and have hope. Even Jesus' friends who got to see him do amazing things, like walk on water and turn a little bit of food into a lot, had trouble seeing his goodness when he died. They had trouble believing his promises to never leave them were true. Maisie, the French bulldog, could have had trouble believing that, too. She was abandoned because she had bad eyes as a baby. Then once the eyes were taken care of and she was getting used to being blind, we found out her jaw was bad and her teeth, too. Maui, the St. Bernard, could have thought all people were bad. And so God must be bad, too, because his people gave him back to his mom when he got too big, and they didn't like how he looked. Even Edison, the service dog poodle, could have easily lost hope when he started having seizures and it seemed like he might not be able to continue doing his service work. All of their lives had tough things that could have easily made them think that God was not good and didn't keep his promises because life was too hard. But all three of the Hellman dogs were able to do something some of Jesus' friends couldn't do. They had hope. They believed things could get better. They continued to love people and trust people to take care of them. One of Jesus' friends that didn't lose hope and was able to trust in Jesus was Peter. He was sad and scared after Jesus died, but when the women who heard Jesus was alive told Peter the news, he didn't just brush them off like some of their friends did. He wasn't too sad to run to the tomb and see for himself because he had hope that Jesus could really be alive. Hard things are going to happen, and life is sometimes going to be different than what we would like it to be. But if we can be like Peter and the dogs and look for signs of God's goodness, we might just get to see it for ourselves. Peter saw an empty tomb, and then he saw his friend Jesus alive again. And the dogs, their lives are probably not what they expected them to be, but now they have new lives. Edison saw some good doctors that helped him get medicine to feel better, and he's going to graduate from college soon. Maui found his for forever family. And Maisie, while Maisie is finally feeling much better, playing with her brothers in her new family, and who knows what she'll do next now that her life is getting better. Maybe she'll go on a big adventure, or try a new sport. But whatever she does, she knows she is loved and cared for, and that helps her have hope trusting that God really is good no matter what bad comes her way. So you may not see hope in your Easter basket, but Easter shows us that we can have hope that God is good and loving and keeps his promises, just like Jesus did when he came out of the tomb. We'll invite all of our our ukuleles and praise team and everybody to come up, and we're all going to stand and sing... A song that we've been singing, I think, for Easter for, I don't know how many long, how many years, but Ali, he is coming, so why don't you uh, stand and join us on Ali, he is coming.
<laughs> well, we now have two pastors at this church. And we both enjoy working together so much, and we love Easter. Uh, so we decided that we would do this together today. Um, but one of us decided to get married last weekend. <laughs> Which means this is unrehearsed, exactly. so we'll see what happens. Exactly. But let's start with our scripture. Let's look at this story. We've been looking through Peter's eyes at this whole journey with Jesus. And today we are at resurrection, and I love Luke's account because he gives us kind of a whole array of reactions to Jesus' resurrection. Let's look at Luke chapter 24. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. <coughs> Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale. And they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. 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 Now, I love Luke's scripture not only because it's the women who preach the gospel first, but I love that we get all those reactions in this story that they have all forgotten what Jesus told them the whole time, the promises that he made that he was coming back. They had lost hope. And that's okay, because we lose hope. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, those are my dogs in that video. Uh, and my daughter's service dog, who's off duty and showing it this morning. Uh, but we brought that little French bulldog home a few months ago, thinking we knew everything that was wrong with her and we were ready. And then her teeth started falling out. And we, the first few vets that we saw gave her a death sentence. And I was just flabbergasted. Like, are you kidding me? We brought this dog into our home, a home where my mother-in-law is dying. Not, she doesn't live in our home, but we're already dealing with grief and loss. And now, this little dog is gonna die. And I lost it, you guys, truly lost it. Like, I thought this is it. There is no hope. Like, we are just doomed in our family right now. We are cursed. And I had a really hard time understanding why God would let these things happen. And I've been through much worse things, but I just was at a wall with God going, why did you let this dog come to our house? And then the dog already had to eat mushy food, guys, even before the teeth started falling out. And so we got this food processor to help pulverize all her food. And I'm not kidding you, we took it out of the box, plugged it in, started it, got halfway through making her food for the week, and it broke. <laughs> Straight out of the box, it broke. So thankfully, there was a warranty company. I contacted them. And they told me, cut the cord, send us a picture, and we'll send you a new one. We don't even make that model anymore. And that made me so angry. <laughs> I already felt like life was calling our dog a waste of time and money and space, and just writing our dog off. And now I was supposed to throw away this brand new appliance, and it got me, guys. It got me. And I was so angry, because I wanted to know that life, even of an appliance, is valued. <laughs> I wanted to know that everything doesn't have to just be tossed away and wasted in our society, that there is hope, that there is value, that there is love. 
But thankfully, I get to be a part of this congregation. And there were people that came alongside us with Maisie and encouraged us to do it, to go through the surgeries, to, to, keep, to keep going, because her life meant something. And she had brought so much hope to people that this couldn't possibly be the end of her story. And as you know, if you've been around or you don't know or you saw in the children's lesson, she's great now. She's here today, too. Be careful petting her if you have cookies on your hands because she is blind and loves food. <laughs> but there is hope. Jesus shows us that when he keeps his promise and comes back. You know, I grew up being taught that Easter was all about that thing up there or this thing up here before the flowers, that it was all because of my sin and my bad things, and that's why Jesus had to go through all this. is I love Guardians, um, back when Marvel was still making good movies. Uh, but Scott Erickson did this image uh, this week, and he's actually wearing this image in the one that we'll see next um, on a t-shirt in Disneyland today. I love this image because Rocket is so just beat. They all are. They've lost people. They've lost Groot, who gave his life for all of them. And there's just that feeling of loss, and things can never get better, and things can never continue, and there will never be joy and life and wonder again. And yet, Rocket takes that shred of Groot, and he has enough hope, just like Peter had enough hope to run to the tomb, and he plants it. And then we get the next image. <laughs> I am Groot. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. <laughs> I actually have a little Groot figurine right next to my um, computer. You probably didn't know that. I didn't. I'm on Zoom. There's a little Groot right there. See? Um, Resurrection. He's my favorite, too. <laughs> well, I love all of that, Heather. I had very similar thoughts when I was looking at the text for this week. And I, too, tend to get hung up on the women. That's what I want to pay attention to. Go, first evangelists ever. Um, but what, because we're following this journey of Peter, I was paying more attention to Peter, and you've heard me say this earlier in Lent, I, I just don't give Peter enough credit, I think. Peter, Peter is just so interesting. He's just too dramatic. But in this case, I'm like, yeah, why are we not all following Peter? He's the only guy in this story who remembered what we were supposed to remember. This was of course, an unbelievable thing, someone to rise from the dead. But Jesus had told them. He said, this is going to happen. Watch for it. And they all forgot. Because they all were caught up in their grief and the pain and the suffering, which is exactly what we all do. That's exactly what happened to Heather with her food processor. We get pulled into what we know about life, which is suffering. That is the human journey. That was Jesus' journey as a man on this earth, and it is ours. And I think, I was thinking too, like you said, about what is this symbol of the cross that we are looking at Sunday after Sunday? And I remembered Heather's sermon sometime during Advent when she said, Why is the symbol a cross that we hang up instead of a manger? Because our faith is built on this core concept that God is not in some far off place looking down, judging us and all of that stuff, but actually came here to live with us. That's the manger. That's what's unique about our faith, that Jesus, our God, lived here with us. And then, even after our world did the worst to him that we could possibly do, and he died on the cross, then he rose again. We should have a tomb, an empty tomb up here, and a manger up here. That's what our hope and our faith is actually about. But I think we get fixated on the cross because, just like the disciples then, this whole Easter thing is just an idle tale. Because we have no framework for that. We don't understand that. We don't understand 
the kind of hope that resurrection means, even though we are resurrection people. That's what it means to be a Christian. We are resurrection people. We believe every day that our life is new, that our life is flourishing because we have hope, but we hold on to the part that we understand so much better. We understand death. We understand a martyr. We understand assassination. We understand injustice. And so that's the part that we hold on to because it makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the greatest gift in all of this, which is the hope of new life. And that's why there's flowers on this cross. Because it's not dead. It is living in all of us. So thank you for planning that image, Heather, back at Christmas time. <laughs> well, challenge accepted for the manger in the tomb. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We have a little worship rant. Going yeah, on. yeah. Well, I thought of something else along these lines. Um, I learned once from a psychotherapist that when good things happen to us, when you receive a compliment, an affirmation, something positive happens to you, it hits your brain and it bounces off like a super ball. <laughs> yeah, catch it. Somebody catch it. But you know what happens when something negative hits our brain? When we receive an insult, when we're criticized, when something bad happens, when we're in pain, do you know what happens then? Our brain holds on to it like Velcro and won't let it go. That's why therapists have job security because <laughs> and pastors. Because we spend our whole lives trying to rip that Velcro off. And that's why we need more of the good stuff to bounce around and help us oh. out. Jeez. <laughs> I'll stop now. I'll stop now. <laughs> All right, who doesn't have one yet? <laughs> if you didn't get one, we could get you on the way out, too. <laughs> you didn't know you were going to get a ball today. Hope is alive, guys. This is why I love her. Jennifer said on Friday, I think we need bouncy balls for church. I said, yes. I said, I didn't even tell you what it's about. I don't care. grief, and we've got to run to that. 
like a bouncing ball. And we need to look for as many of those as we can find to help us remember. Do you want to say anything else before we confess? No, you, you got it. <laughs> so we've been ending our, our sermon times with a prayer of confession, which often we think of confession as something we have to do because we're bad, and that's not why we're doing this. We're doing this to release ourselves, to rip those Velcro balls out of our heads and throw them at the cross where they can be held for us so that we can be free to remember and to run toward hope. So let's keep that in mind. As we, like Peter, run to the tomb, let's tell the truth of our lives so that once again we can be reminded that our God is a God of grace, of mercy, and of love. We pray and we confess so we can remember. Would you join us in this prayer of confession? stone is rolled away. We assume it's a mistake. The angels say he is not here. We assume their news is fake. The women tell the story. We do not want to hear it. Peter runs to the tomb. But we do not understand. Forgive us, God, for thinking an empty tomb is, tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us for seeing discarded burial cloths and still holding tight to death. Forgive us for pushing away reasons to hope when you are alive and well in the world. Teach us to see what you see. Unravel the threads of our unbelief. Amen. The angels tell the women, remember what Jesus told you. So friends, remember this. You are seen, you are forgiven, you are held in God's grace. All of this is true. Grace and mercy abound for you. Remember this. Amen. Amen. Now will you join us for our closing song?
Thank you.